Uh, uh, Mr. Sam. Yeah. I'm looking at uh, these. Uh, My dog toys. Dog toys. Yeah. Do you like have a dog? I used to. We oh. found out we were having twins. Oh, so you decided no dog? No, we farmed her out. Yeah. Well, uh, um, these are kind of cool. I like these. It's like this actually kind of looks like chemical. I uh, know. That's why I got them. Yeah. This is like. Oh, I like this. One. Is this the park? Yeah. Octahedral. Nice octahedron, folks. This is the octahedral shape. How cool is that? Yeah, tetra. And this is a tetrahedron, man. Actually, it's tetrahedral. This is a tetrahedron. That's actually true. Yeah. Well, I was make checking yeah, to make sure you understood that, you know. and you know. Apparently you do. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'm they pretty make nice impressed. Hats too. My they kids do. like to do that. Yeah, Hatland. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Well, folks, what we're going to do today is we are going to um, be learning about two main topics: resonance and the Vesper model of the atom. All right. I have no pin. What happened to my pin? Control P. I have pin now. Very good. Okay. <laughs> I could not get to work. All right. So, we want to talk about resonance. Tell me about resonance, Mr. Sams. Uh, well, that's when you can have more than one valid Lewis structure for a particular substance. More than one valid Lewis structure. That's very cool. So, how's that definition of um, different than resonance structures? Well, I guess I'd probably define resonance Yeah, structure. I'm thinking yeah. this is actually the definition of this. Yeah, resonance, basically you've got electrons that are kind of flying around. You can, uh, if, yeah, let's, let's just do an example. Let's do the nitrate ion. Yeah, I think it's probably good to do yeah. an example. So let's do an example, and let's do, like you said, the nitrate ion. Now, we've draw, drawn the Lewis structure of nitrate mm -hmm. before, so I'm not going to, you know, take the 5 plus, you know, 5 plus 3 times 6 plus 1. So you should be good at this now. So I'm just going to draw the structure of nitrate. So nitrate looks like this. You have four electrons on that top O. You have six electrons on this O, six electrons on this O. And since it is an ion, you need a bracket bracket and charge. a charge. And so, so Lee, make sure you have your charge. All right. But could we draw more than one structure? We could, because right now you've got the double bond going up to the oxygen up on the top. But it could just as easily have come from one of the oxygens, one of the other oxygens. So I could draw it like this and yep. put the O, the double bond on the O that's in the bottom left corner, as I've done here. Or I can, or I think there's probably another one, Mr. Sams. Uh, yeah, you could go to the other oxygen, the one on the right there. Yeah, so I could do the one on the right, put it down here just to make more space. All right, takes the one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. And, and negative one. Charge. Yeah. I got so, the charge. Lead to get your charge. Don't forget the charge. Yeah. All so right. basically, that double bond is. Ooh, this is not correct, Mr. Bergman. Oh, this should be a single bond here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, that double bond is. It, it's kind of scooting around. I mean, you could say that it's resonating from one oxygen to the other. So the the electrons there are they're they're really kind of in all the places, all the time. They're just kind of scooting around in there. And uh, all of them are valid Lewis structures, and um, yeah, the, the electrons resonate, if you will, from one oxygen to the other. Basically, yeah, this, this second bond right here, right there, whatever, it can move from one bond to the next. So there's actually something that's very important to understand about resonant structures, and that is, is that if you were to look at the nitrate ion, um, Actually, maybe we should have a little conversation first about double and single bonds. If I had a single bond versus a double bond versus a triple bond, the single bond would be the longest bond, and the triple bond would be the shortest bond. I'll get the end right here. And then, of course, a double bond would be in between. In between. Um, it also, the, the single bond would also be the weakest bond, and the triple bond would be the strongest bond. And of course, the double bond would be in between. So the interesting thing about nitrate, though, is if you look at nitrate, let's change the color maybe. About the nitrate is if you were to look at the structure, you would expect to see a double bond and two single bonds, right? So you'd have a short, strong bond, and you would see, so you would see, you know, I'm going to go down and draw the structure. You would have a short, strong bond and two weak, long bonds, right? But that's not the case. What is the case? We've got three bonds that are the We've same. We've got three bonds that are the same. They're all actually the same. You'll say, well, a single and two doubles. But the answer to when we talk about resonance is technically the actual Lewis structure 
is the average of all of the resonant structures. I think an easier way to look at this is to think of, of the um, nitrate as having a single bond to each and a third. So maybe we do a dashed line. It's almost easier to think of that. And what really is going on is those electrons, because what actually, you know, these are the O's, and each of these is, each of these is um, like a bond and a third in this case, a third. So, um, uh, yeah, so each of these is the same strength. And so, Mr. Sams, if you were to look at the bond in the nitrate ion, mm -hmm. how would you explain its length and strength compared to a regular single bond or a regular double bond? Oh, well, it's going to be shorter and stronger than a regular single bond, but it's going to be longer and weaker than a regular double bond. So it's going to fit in kind of right here. Yeah. So it's, it's not as strong as a double bond um, and also not as short as a double bond. So it's an intermediate between, and if you think of it as a bond and a third, that tells you it's a little bit stronger than a single bond. Oops, didn't circle very well. Okay, does that make sense? So that's resonance. You'll be asked to draw lots of resonance structures, and there's lots of them that can be quite interesting, oh, yeah. but we'll let you have at that. Another important concept is to discuss the concept of a formal charge. Oh my gosh, a formal charge? Sounds like you like a formal wear at the, for the prom date. This is the charge with a bow tie. Yeah, the charge with the bow tie. And these are essentially the rules. You take the number of valence electrons, typically associated with the atom, subtract the total number of electrons, subtract the number. Now, when you're trying to determine which structure is best, you want your formal charges closest to zero. Now, um, you should copy this down. All right, it might already be in your handout. And then we need to do some examples. All right, the classic example in formal charge is the sulfate ion. So if you were to draw the Lewis structure of the sulfate ion, almost everybody would draw it just like this. I'll draw it for you. Again, I'm not going to take the time to tell you how to draw that, uh, play the game, um, you know, add up the electrons and distribute them. I happen to just know the structure in my brain cells. I, went, I know way too much about some things, don't I? Mm -hmm. This is what you would just say, right? That obeys the octet rule. Everyone's happy. Everyone's got eight. We're happy, right? Well, let's assign formal charge now. We want to assign formal charge to every single one of my atoms. Now, what you do is you take the number of electrons normally associated with the oxygen, or for example, up here. Oxygen normally has six. Right. And then you take the number of electrons around it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the bond counts as just one. So you say six minus seven. So the charge on this O, or the formal charge, would be negative one. And if you look at each oxygen, they're all the same. They're all the same. So they would each have a formal charge of negative one. Does that make sense? It does. Now the sulfur, though, normally has six electrons assigned to him. And you subtract each bond. Each bound counts as one number, six minus four. You see what I'm doing from the from the rule set right here. Subtract the actual number of electrons around the atom. Subtract the number of bonds. I'm doing that. Six minus four is positive two. So the formal charge on the sulfur is positive 2. The formal charge on the oxygens are negative 1. Mm -hmm. The problem with those numbers is they are not very close to 0. Nope. There is a better way to draw the sulfate ions. So let me, and, and this is going to violate the octet rule. But, but sulfur if, can do that because it's in the third period. Right, and we talked about that last time, violations of the octet rule. If I were to draw this Lewis structure like this, We still have 32 electrons, so we're still. I have not violated charge. anything. I've just made two double bonds and made a two negative charge here on this one, and now I'm switched to red. Now, what is going to be there? Are six. You still for the oxygens. You'll say six, right? But then minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this will be six minus seven. So he would have charged of negative one. The ones with the single bonds. Right. Just like the last time. Just like the last time. But for this oxygen, this um, outer oxygen out here, you'll do six minus, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So six minus six is zero, right? And for the sulfur, it will be a six minus, and there are six bonds around him, six, which is zero. zero. Now, now, the rule is, is the structure that yields the closest to zero formal charge wins. Well, obviously, picture two, if you will, 
and I'm circling or whatever, is a better picture. Yep. Therefore, the formal charge, this is a better picture of the sulfate ion than is this. And actually, you would have resonance with this, wouldn't you? you because would. you could move the double bonds onto another atom. They could go, uh, yeah. They could go to the to the up top and down and oxygen. Exactly. Well. So you have resonance actually with this interesting thing. So that's a good example. Another example.